okay so welcome back and uh, finally time to get into getting our hands dirty that's what the, they say so we'll start by looking at the the program which we covered in the slides if you remember this program the my function one and uh, my function my fun two and the main and all of that uh, so the code is over here let's just open it quickly just remember it a little bit so you can see we have main checks for uh, argument c make sure that the argument counter is more than one if it is it will call my fun one and it will pass the uh, the, the value that you you pass to the the argument you pass to the program at runtime and then uh, we'll call my function one my function one will take that value to will copy it into the buffer which is 16 bytes and then that buffer uh, gets sent to my function two which all it does is it will print it say you entered whatever okay so first let's check the application we'll keep coming back and forth here because we'll need uh, we'll need this I'm also going to open another notepad for taking notes. Let me disable this one. I don't want the grouping. I actually hate the grouping, but it seems I am unable to do that anyway, because maybe this window is not activated. Okay, I, I will uh, just have to work with what I have for now. So, okay, let's go here, get our BMD going see what we have and so we know the application not the not the c1 we know the application will re like we require some arguments otherwise as you can see here it says if there the uh, the argument counter is not bigger than one uh, then it will print no argument so that's what happened so let's uh, just use it again but this time call uh, pass something so hello so it's going to say and you entered hello let's do uh hello class for example okay hello class but let's put a space between it it then it only takes hello so this is one important thing to keep in mind that str copy or the value that will be taken whatever we uh this null this will be considered like a null byte so the system cannot take the whole value hello class let's check if we can do it this way so yep if we want to pass the whole world the whole let's say uh, message hello class then we need to put it between double quotes that way uh, the system can understand that otherwise the system does not understand it will stop at the uh, at the uh, at the space so it will consider uh, it will only see that and the other one will be considered another argument but since we are only interested in here in one the other one will actually not be used so we know how to start the application and it, we know what it does let's see what happens if let's say for example we did add hello uh, again or let's say hello hello or uh, anything else just add more values because we know from the code that it has a buffer of 16 bytes and if you remember back in the slides these were uh, like around 24 bytes so uh, these are tw the, the stack will uh, the system will allocate 24 bytes for this because that's how the uh, compiler will uh, will consider that this application needs this amount of uh, space on the stack so let's see this one what will happen now and you can see that the program actually kind of crashed by the way you can see something really happened let's see if we add more than this let's do that see the the, the program actually crashed and if we have let's see if we have here uh, if I have sys internals then I could easily show you what's in tools okay so where is our sys internals it's here let's open them 
I'm sure we can see that the application actually crashed. Okay, so this internals process service explorer. Yep, let's get process explorer running. Okay. Okay, so let's go here and make sure we can like see what's going on. So if we run this, as you can see, see this where fault. This happens when uh, when you ha when the application crashes. So we can see that the application actually crashed because it's not uh, let's say programmed to handle this amount of data. <coughs> Good. So we. We understood now that it takes some value, like again, test, it will take, uh, hello, if we do this, it will only take the first part, but if we put between double quotes, it will take both of them. And at least for now, we know that it can uh, like take a value and print it out. So if I say my name, so it will just say you entered Ali and so on and so forth. So we understand now how the application works. We understand how we can pass data to it. So it takes the data or the, 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 the input as arguments from the command line. Now let's get into the debugger and start looking at how we will be uh, attacking this and understand how it works actually even. So we can close this, we don't need it anymore. Let's just drag this to immunity and get started so it's loaded if we run it this time i assume you know what's going to happen right will it work or will it crash i'm going to give you two seconds to answer me one two no you won't you didn't give me the answer back <laughs> so it will crash because why because we didn't pass it we didn't give it any arguments so we should get the no arguments passed great so we know what's happening so let's go to file let's go to open and let's just do here and say hello. Or actually, let's use the A's. I, I, I like to use A's. And let's actually first thing pass 16A. So in order to do that, we can just type 16A or let's just call idle because we have Python installed, which comes with immunity. So if we just do print a multiplied by 16 we get that so i can copy it it's the easiest way probably it's up to you open so now we have our application which is open okay so what we can do now we can see here in the debugger uh, we have our test application loaded and this application requires these other uh, libraries so that's why we can see them in the address space of this application uh, if we go to test, for example, and we can see there are there's a lot of code. By the way, if you open this in IDA or in any other uh, disassembler, uh, Ghidra, you'll see that there are lots of code which is actually for preparing the the system and preparing the stack and all of that uh, before actually the code gets executed. We are, I'm gonna try. Let me even increase the the appearance. I forgot to do that. Since this happened, uh, let's do this actually. Is this good? I think it should be. Should be good, should be fine. But I can also probably increase it to 16 maybe. Oh, it doesn't take that, okay, no problem. So we can, uh, now we have these, the, this is our, this is our stack. Let's 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 expand this a little bit here so we can we can read all the values. Okay. And let's drag this over here so we can give space to the memory addresses. Come on. So we can see the memory addresses now. Let's look at the bytecodes. These are the bytecodes. And this is the uh, the assembly instructions. So we can probably bring this a little bit here. Good. 
So we can see all of these are different instructions, which are again for preparing the stack, preparing other different things, the compiler adds to the application. One way probably that you could go find uh, uh, go find where our main there are many ways to do that but I, I we can we can we can use uh, a basic way so you can just right click here search for and then let's search for strings so where are our strings here so we can see these strings and we can see here uh, where is it no arguments okay no arguments now this application by the way I compiled it with Ming W, okay. You can also find the way how I compiled it on my GitHub. So in case you want to compile it yourself, uh, all you need to do is just uh, just go to my GitHub and uh, and check the the lab. You'll see the instructions over there. So let's go to this one. Double click on it. We can see this is where this argument is printed or when it's passed to the stack. They pass to this function which is puts which is going to be printing actually the value on our screen let's see what do we have here let's expand this a little bit more okay so this is where no arguments were passed let's see if we go back a little bit more this is where str happens this is where you entered so if we look at the code again if we look at the code uh, this is where uh you entered so this is here so let's look where is main probably this is main by the way this is this is where main is this is where main starts because here is where str copy oh no 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 this not this is not main i think main is in this one this is main because uh, str copy is where we have that in my function one so this is probably my function one and then uh, in main we only had a comparison between argument C and th this is probably over here I think this is the comparison yep this is the comparison here and then we have a call to uh, my function one so I'm assuming then we do the call to this we can we can put breakpoints on all of these and test them so let's put a breakpoint here because I'm sure this is main so we can put a breakpoint here and now start our execution but if, if, if actually let's do one, one more thing before we start the execution if we look at the like this one test after the call this is a test something happens here what do we have here i'm assuming by the way this is uh something for preparing the application so i'm assuming this is there then we have these comparisons and then the jump and then this is i would assume this is the one that does the call to uh my function one okay or my function one so we can we can look at that which is 14 to c so if we go up a little bit here 14 to C. Yep, see, we, this is where we can also put a breakpoint here. Even though we can control it without the breakpoint, we can see that. Uh, but I'm going to put a, put a breakpoint here. Also, same thing uh, here. We copied the str copy. And then based on the code, we have then a call to. So this is the str copy. And then after that, we have a call to my function 2. So I'm assuming this is my function 2. 1410 it ends with 1410 so if i go up a little bit we can see yep so this is my function too okay so let's start and you can see then even the 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 uh, you entered this is over here so let's start the execution okay we can go back here and say start let's look what's going to happen so first thing as you can see here it stopped at the main program just bring this a little bit here okay so push ebp let's first now write down what is the current ebp you'll see why i'm gonna i'm gonna mention why just in a second but i just want to make sure i copy it now this is the pre-main ebp pre-main ebp okay so this is for 
في before the main at the end main is just a function so before main is called this is the pre main ebp so if we continue f7 so it's gonna be pushed onto the stack okay it got pushed on the stack what happened with esp again what happened with esp esp now has been what what happened again do you remember we said esp will be uh, decreasing every time we add a value because it goes to the lower end of the memory let's continue so now if we do this instruction which is move ebp esp so we are going to now copy the value of esp where into ebp so let's do that so as you can see here now ebp is what is this value so let's copy this and this is the ebp for who this is for main so main ebp okay let's do it this these are notes by the way just to make sure we can track but you don't need them if you if you are good but since this is the first time let's just do that now and esp this value and then sub esp 10 these are uh, what ming w i, I did a, some search to uh, find this these are what Ming W actually does to make sure the stack is aligned 16 bytes at a time. Okay, so every time it grows, it grows actually 16 bytes. So let's just continue, please. And you can see actually if you trace them, you'll see that the stack is now going to be uh, 16 bytes. It added 16 bytes. So ESP uh, got increased by 16 bytes. Don't forget that 10 is here, the, the, the value 10 here is not really decimal this is uh base 16 so it's actually uh 16 bytes okay so make sure you remember that let's just open these also maybe we need them we'll see that in a little bit and let's open this guy over here okay so let's continue so here what do we have after that we have the this function okay so we can uh, continue running this function okay which is again what i told you will be the one uh, that's going to be uh, preparing the uh, the system with maybe stuff for the stack and all of those the canaries actually i don't want to mention that now that's why i'm trying to avoid this but we will come to that later so we will uh, continue until the return because i want to go back and let me make sure this time I go back. Okay, so now we have. Uh, so now still see the value has not been entered. What we are going to do is uh, compare. But after that, now we are going to compare what what EBP plus eight with number one. So EBP, which is FF twenty eight. Where is this? If we follow in stack, so FF28, and then this one plus eight. So if we add eight, then it means this value here. So it's saying compare one with what EBP plus eight is pointing to. So EBP plus eight, which is this one, is actually pointing to two. So it means this one, we, we do have two arguments on which have been passed uh, one is the the name of the function the, sorry the name of the program and the other one was the parameter that we passed and we passed them through actually through here when we when we loaded the application so what will happen now is if we continue where is f7 yep we continue here we are going to do the test so jump less or equal if if this is going to be less or equal we are going to do the jump but since it's not less we will just continue right we it's more than one the, the we were comparing with one but it's more than one so actually we will not get uh, we will not jump because it's not less it's not equal so now what we are going to do is ebp plus c which is 12 copy what ebp plus c is pointing to into eax so if we go back ebp again which is this one just to make sure we save that here yep so if we go back here and then again follow on stack just to keep an eye here and then for eight 
12. So what we want to do is what this is pointing to. Okay, we want this address. Copy it where into EAX. Now look at EAX, what's going to happen now when we hit F7. See, what happened is the value which was at EBP plus 12 was copied into EAX. Now we are going to add 4 with EAX. So we added 4 to EAX. So it gave us this value. And now what this value is pointing to, we are going to copy it back into EAX. So if we look at what this value is pointing to, okay, maybe we can, let's see if we can see this and maybe the dump. So this value, did I, what did I do? I have to go again, following dump, okay. So this value, which is what EBP is currently pointing to, this value is going to be copied where into EAX. Let's F7 again, see? So the value which was on in there is now copied where into uh, that address, sorry, that address, uh, which was pointing to some value. Okay, so the address which was here got copied where into EAX. So that address, where is it? This one, that address, because we are saying between brackets, what that address is point, uh, that uh, we want that address to be copied into EAX. So we copied that address uh, over there. Now, uh, we can see that this address actually is pointing to those A's that we entered. So if we also follow the DOM, we can see these are our the A's that we added to, we, we copied to the, the application. Now, what's going to happen here? We are going to do EAX, copy the value in EAX to what ESP is pointing to. So ESP is currently pointing to this location. So if we say follow in stack, so ESP FF10 is pointing to this value. Now, when we hit F7, it will be changed with the 2620. Okay, so as you can see, 2620 got uh, got copied into this, this location. Now, what are we going to do now is the call for, uh, which was the call, if you remember, for my function one. So this was, this is actually my function one. Do we want to call it? Yes, we want to jump in there and understand how that's working. So I'm going to do F7 to jump into it. Okay, so now before everything starts, we need to do what? We need to save our EBP. So this value, which is EBP here, we saved it, is now going to be pushed where? Onto the stack. Okay, now it's going to be pushed where? Onto the stack. So F7. Now we saved which EBP? We saved the EBP of main. So that way we can go back. So we now saved EBP of main. So now we can go back. Now we are going to change it, which is move EBP ESP. So we are going to now copy the value of ESP into EBP. See what happened? ESP got copied in here. So let's copy this one and say this is the main EBP. And this is the EBP now for, uh, yeah. So this is now our, the for function one. E B P equal this value. Okay. So we now saved this E B P. Oh, sorry. This is the E B P for now function one. Uh, so this is the base of our frame. What ha what we have here is E sub E S P twenty eight. So it seems here we are adding uh, twenty eight to ESP, so it's going to create some space on the stack, so let's do that. So uh, you can see ESP got, uh, it got increased with uh, 28, okay? Now what we are going to do is to EBP plus 8, what that's pointing, copy it into EAX. So where is EBP? Hold on stack, and then plus uh, how much? 8, so 4, 8, so we are going to copy this value, uh, sorry, we are going to copy this, what this is pointing to into EAX. So let's look at EAX, see what EAX is going to hold now, look at what EAX is going to hold after we finish this. It should hold what? Uh, what did we do? Uh, copy EAX into 
or didn't I execute that yet? Uh, what did I miss here? Okay, repeat PAX. Okay. So now we are going to copy uh, EAX into. Where is this pointing to now? Okay, this is this is like here. Yeah, now we are going to copy uh, EAX into what ESP plus four is pointing to. So if ESP, I'm, maybe I wasn't pointing to the correct address. So if ESP, uh, if we go to the stack, it's pointing to here, pointing here. So ESP plus four means this value will be copied here. So let's do that, F7. Great, so that that worked, correct. And we can see 2620, see 2620, which is the 2620 of EAX. I'm not reading, by the way, all the address, just for simplicity. And now we have what EBP minus 18, minus 18, by the way, this is in hex. So we are talking about 24. So EBP, let's go there. So EBP, uh, this is EBP, right? And then we have four, eight, 12, 16, 20, 24. So we are going to copy this value where into EAX. So let's do that. So good. We copied that value. See, EAX changed. So we copied that value now into EAX. And now we are going to put that value into where ESP is pointing to. Okay. And now we're, which is actually, uh, this, which is actually the destination of our uh, STR copy. Because STR copy takes destination and source. So we already have the source, now we need the destination. And the destination, by the way, this one, if I go to dump here, this is where we want to copy our value. So let's do now F7, okay? So if we do F7, now we pushed, we copied, sorry, the value here. So see, now they got resolved. So we have the source, we have the destination, and now we are gonna do the STR copy. I don't want to jump into str copy so i'm just going to do step over so f8 we don't want to do that and now if you look at what eax was pointing to see did you see the values it uh, it changed because it got overwritten with the a's that we passed great so we copied now the value now what we are going to do is it's saying uh, load the effective address of EBP minus 18. So we're going to load that word into EAX and it's the same value. So that's why nothing really changed. Then here we are going to do copy that value, uh, which is in EAX, copy to where ESP is pointing to. So that value, which is 61 FE F0, it's already there. So nothing really is going to happen. Now what we are going to do, we are going to do call to this other function which is actually the uh, which is actually if you remember the uh, my function where is it sorry my function too so we are going to now call this so let's do we want to test it yes we want to do that so f7 to go there see we already have the breakpoint on it now push ebp so let's save ebp so ebp now got pushed and now this will be what function two ebp equals what equals sorry not this we we haven't done that yet okay so now we saved the ebp of the first function my function one right and now let's do this yep now we have the new EBP, so this is for my function two. Okay, so this equals this value. Okay, and this is also doing some preparation on the stack for some values. Now what we are doing, so EBP plus eight, where is EBP? Let's go to EBP on the stack. This is EBP plus eight, so four, eight. We are gonna copy this address where or what this value is pointing to 
into EAX. So let's look at EAX. What's going to happen to EAX? What's going to happen to EAX? Nothing because it's the same value actually. And now we are going to copy EAX to what ESP plus 4 is pointing to. So ESP is pointing here. So plus 4 means here. So we are going to copy this value FE F0 into this location. So look, it happened. Okay, so we copied that. And now this value, which is a string, this is this already has some memory address, which is already known to the system. Uh, it's, it gets loaded, sorry, where is it? It gets loaded at uh, in, loaded in memory. So the system at runtime will know where this is. Okay, so this is the address of it, by the way, if we, if you, I just wanted to show it to you. This is where it's located in the address space of this process. So this value is going to be copied where into what ESP is pointing to. So if we do F7, and this is what ESP is pointing to, see, FEC0. So now the address to that value is copied where onto the top of the stack where ESP is pointing to. Now, do we want to do the printf? The answer is no. So I'm going to do a jump over or a step over. So I'm going to do F8. Don't want to do that. But now I, I'm sure the print happened. That's why we see this. You entered the, those values, okay? And then nop, and then leave. Which what will leave do? If you remember, it will uh, move EBP to ESP. So it will copy. Sorry, it will copy ESP to. Uh, it will move back everything on the stack, and then it will pop the value from the stack. So as you can see now, here if we go back. So what happened now is we are restoring. The EBP for function one. Okay, we are storing the EBP for function one. And let's continue. So, return, we return back. Now we are uh, returning again. So, we can, uh, this we return to, let's say, to, uh, we return to uh, my function one. But if you remember, my function one had nothing here. Okay. So what is going to happen now is, again, we're going to put ESP to EBP and then pop EBP. So again, ESP now will be to EBP, and we are popping it. But those are two instructions uh, done in one, one single one. So now, as you can see, we restored FF28. So FF28, which is for the main function. So now we are back. We will be back to main. Now return will take me back where to this location and this location where is it this was passed on the stack so if you look at this location it will be the next instruction to be executed after what after this one is finished so if we do the return f7 now we went back here and now uh, we have nothing to do else because the the else this is when we have the else statement gets executed but in our case we are now uh, this wasn't taken we, we so we we jumped over it now we are going to go back here so that's why move ex zero so uh, we are returning this value zero into ex and then when we do the leave again what's going to happen we are actually going to restore the ebp for who for the pre main so as you can see here, now EBP is FF80, which is FF80, our pre-main, and return should return us where back to before we run the program. So if we continue, if we continue now, uh, if I hit F9, this is when the application will terminate, and this is when the application ends. So we, we understood how to debug this and understood how to trace, follow, each uh, of uh, let's say EBP and ESP with the values on the stack, the values in registers, uh, in memory, uh, what ex what instructions were executed, etc. I'm gonna stop this recording and then start another one. But in the other one, we'll start by attacking now the application and see how can we corrupt the uh, the the stack and take advantage of it. Okay, so part one is done from our hands-on. I hope you can now replicate that and you understood everything that happened. Uh, part two, we'll now look how we can 
uh, exploit this or at least how we can corrupt the stack and make take advantage of it and then in part three is where we actually will be running our shell code which is the malicious code that we want to execute so that's it for this video and we'll see you in the next one thank you